Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Full Retard. Today we are checking out some Let's Not Meet stories. This is technically my mother's story, although I am also in it. When I was four months old, in 1994, my mum and dad had been having money issues and as a result, he would often work late. One late Wednesday night, around 9 p.m., there was a knock at the door, and my mum put me down in the living room and went to see if it was dad, having forgotten his keys. She opened the door without looking properly, and a man was standing on the doorstep. He smiled at her and asked if he could use our phone as his car had broken down. Flustered, she said yes, and walked backwards a little to let him get to the telephone that lived on the hall table. However, he didn't stop at the table, and kept walking up the hall towards her. She asked him what he wanted, pointed at the phone saying it was right there, and said her husband was getting out of the shower. This is where it starts to get really creepy. He stopped walking, cocked his head to one side, said he didn't hear the shower running and then gave her a really big smile. He added that he thought it was just her home right now, wasn't it? Mum said at this point all she could think about was trying to make it to me, maybe dropping me out a window, trying to get us into the bathroom that had a lock, praying to any god, or gods that were listening that dad would pull up in the driveway, anything. And then she heard a growl. Mum had been out getting the washing in from the outside laundry before she'd gone in to check on me in the living room and had left the back door open a crack. Our Doberman Pride had gotten into the house and had walked out of the kitchen into the hallway between Mum and this man. She started growling and showing all her teeth, and Mum told him to get out now, before she set the dog on him. Apparently he freaked out and backed out of the house before taking off down the street. Dad got home about 20 minutes later. Felt like eternity, according to Mum. The man was never caught and we never saw him again, and I really hope I never do, even though I wouldn't know him if I saw him. Pride lived till she was 13 and was the most spoiled dog ever. I don't know what would have happened to mum or me without her. Wow that was a truly troubling story. Imagine being stuck at home with some weirdo in your home while it's just you and your child. This is why everyone needs a dog. Up next we have the witch in the woods. This happened a little over 20 years ago. I was about 10 years old and my sister was 6. We grew up in a small town, raised only by our hard-working mother. It started when school was nearly finished for the year. The nights were late because my sister was up all night crying about a witch. Anyways, my mother started receiving odd calls once in a while at work that just said, I need one of your children. Mom figures it was some stupid prank and ignored it, but then she started receiving calls daily. Eventually she was receiving a call most nights at our home. She reported it to the police, and they said whoever was calling was using random payphones and there wasn't much they could do about it. So she had both her work and home number changed. One night around 10 or so there was a frantic knock on our door. Mom looked out through the window and saw a lady with long hair in her 60s. Not knowing her, Mom went near the locked door and asked what she wanted. The lady asked if she could, could come in because she was in a car accident. Mom said she would call the police for her and told her to wait outside. There was a pause. The lady said no, don't call the cops. Mom thought this was strange, and started walking to the phone. Immediately again a banging on the door. Mom ran to the phone and looked out the window to see the lady staring at her. She coldly said, Dorothy Margaret, I want one of your children. Fake name. She kept repeating it until Mom noticed flashing lights of police approaching and she left. The police searched everywhere, kept a car at our house each night for a week. Nothing. A few weeks later, summer finally started and my sister wasn't having the nightmares anymore about the witch. We were at one of my baseball games and my mother was talking to a teacher at my sister's school and telling her what happened. The teacher said, sounds like your stepmother. Mom looked back confused and said she doesn't have a stepmother. The teacher's face turned white. A while ago a lady in her 60s would come watch the children play at lunch. She said she was my mother's stepmom and liked to watch my sister at lunch. She reported again to the police and they checked camera footage, and sure enough on a faraway park bench there was an old lady, most lunch times. They noticed she was always coming from the woods. So the police did a search and found an old shanty, shack type of place, with her old blankets and fire pit, and pictures she drew of us. That was the last we ever heard of her. 
When summer was ending my sister started having the nightmares of the witch again. Mom asked why she was getting scared again and she said, because she comes to school and watches us. The witch was the old lady. Let's not meet old witch from the woods who wants children. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And if you feel the urge, click the support us link and help us out. We have big plans for the show but need to raise $600 for software licenses to make those plans a reality. Have an idea for a topic or just feedback about the show? Shoot us an email at opinions at mentallydamaged.com.